Okay, let us continue with the module 3 of advanced VLSI. So, the next topic which we are going to study today is data types. So, before that we had the topic uh, regarding the verification guidelines, wherein we have seen that what are the responsibilities of verification engineer, how he has to create an environment where uh, he can build the test bench and he can verify the uh, different designs which are written by the RTL designer. So, as we have seen that what are the set of uh, rules which uh, or guidelines or the process the verification engineer has to follow and we have seen that how the verification environment was created using the different test bench component as and we just considered how exactly the different layers are used to verify the design and the test. It may be a command or it may be a drive, it may be a driver or a generator or it may be a scoreboard or it may be an agent. So, we have seen that what are the different test components we can use for verification purpose. So, next we will continue that how we can code those components for the verification environment. So, basically we are using the system Verilog uh, for developing the verification environment. So, let us just consider what are the additional data types the system Verilog consists of. As we all aware of there are uh, basically uh, two types of data types which we have already studied in the Verilog. So, let us see that what are the learning outcome with respect to this topic that is the data types. Wherein we are going to see that what are the different types which are uh, data types which are used in the system Verilog apart from the Verilog and what are the different arrays used in the verification environment using the system Verilog and what are the differences and where exactly they can be used and creating a new types it is using the type def or enumerated or a structure or union etc. So, just we will continue with the topic that is uh, data types and how exactly uh, that these data types are used for the uh, creation of the test bench environment using the system very low. So, as we consider Verilog 1995, it was a very old uh, Verilog version wherein uh, basically we have two types of data types, variables and nets. So, where uh, reg and ys are used correspondingly for the vari vari variables and the nets and most of the time the reg is used for the storage purpose where the wire is used for the interconnection purpose. So, they are called as the four state values which are able to have the value logic 0, logic 1. Apart from those two, it can be a high impedance or the unknown state that is x. So, there are different uh, variables which we can consider in the Verilog. It may be unsigned or it may be a multi bit 30, signed 32 bit or it may be integer or it may be real or a time. So, as we know that whenever we are making use of the reg in the Verilog, it has to be declared in the procedural statement. So, either it in the always block or it may be initial block. So, now uh, whenever we are using the wire or a net type, it has to be under the assigned statement. So, there are some limitations or the restrictions when we are making use of the data types in the Verilog, but that is avoided in the case of system Verilog, uh, the new added data type is the logic type. So, why there are uh, modification or the improvement is carried out in the system Verilog is basically it is looking for the verification purpose. So, not only the design, so if we have a complex design to verify and uh, you can see that uh, we have seen that how the verification environment has to be uh, standardized to verify all the blocks which are there in the system on a design, whatever it is SOC or it may be any application. So, looking at that, so there is a new data type which is added that is a logic type wherein we need not have to see that whether this can be declared under the assignment or it may be a procedure statement. So, this is a uh, code where uh, data type where we can use anywhere uh, within the uh, procedure statement or it may be a assignment. As you can see that uh, uh, example wherein we have a A, B, C, these are the logic data type we have declared here wherein A is used within the initial block and as well as C is used as the assigned statement. So, if at all we use the very log, so we have to make sure that the C must be of net type and A must be of variable type. So, that is why as when we use the logic type, it is not required for us to look at the procedure statement or the assigned statement where I can make use of those logic data types 
within the initial or always book or it may be a assignment statement. So, this is what the advantage what we have with respect to logic type instead of going for a reg and wire. So, we will just try to define that as the logic type. So, as we have seen that there are four states it may be logic 0, logic 1, high impedance or the unknown uh, do not care. So, if at all we are restricted to use only two bits. So, we wanted to have only logic 0 and logic 1. Under such condition system very long introduced two state data types that improves the simulation per per performance as, a, as well as it reduces the memory show storage. So, just for an example of two state data type is bit here and there are four signed two states types which we can use in the system very long they are byte, short int, int and long int. So, just for an example for the two state we have it may be bit b which is of single bit and it has only either logic 0 or logic 1 and it is of 32 bit here unsigned 32 bit bit. And we have signed integer that is int, byte, short int and long int as well as integer of i4. This is a what uh, we can say that it is a two state signed integer numbers. So, only thing is we have to make sure that whenever it since it is a signed the range what we can look, look we have to look for here is not from 0 to some positive value. Since it is a num, signed number the range varies from minus to plus value that is what we need to keep in mind that. So, how these two state different data types which can be used for the purpose of the uh, for the design or well as, as well as the verification purpose in the system very long. So, another uh, data type or the way in which uh, most widely used is the arrays. So, array is basically a collection of variables there are different arrays which we can uh, consider in the system very long. The first one is a fixed size array. So, second one we can say that the dynamic and the third one is the associative array. So, we will see one by one here. So, in the fixed size array where the dimension of the array is going to be fixed. So, I know that what is the number of elements that I am looking for for a given array. That is why I will make use of the fixed size array. So, it may be a single dimensional or it may be a multi dimensional. So, if it is a single dimensional we just have an example here we array 1 is the name of the array it is of int integer type and there are 10 elements. So, we can have the array with the 10 elements. So, we can refer each element as array of 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, if you go for a multi dimensional it is more than one row you can say. So, integer type array 3 and 4. So, 3 indicates the row, 4 indicates the column. So, this is row and this is the column. So, as we can say that there are 3 rows here. This is a row 1, this is row 2 and similarly we have row 3 here. So, there are 4 columns, column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. Then that means as we are changing the uh, matrix so, we need to correspondingly write what is the value of our row and column. So, multi directional dimensional array also can be used using the same syntax that is array of 3 and 4 where we are representing the dimension in the square bracket. So, in order to assign the element into the array. So, just for an example it is of logic type 4 bit. So, the name of the array is example there are 4 elements over there. So, what are those elements how you are going to assign the element here? So, this is 4 tick h1 that is nothing but we have a 4 bit of value 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we are going to assign the these values for the array of example there are 4 elements those elements are 1, 2, 3 and 4. Suppose if you wanted to assign the same value for all the element then there are two way in which we can perform. The first one is nothing but I can write initially 4 tick h0 that means whatever the value I wanted to assign same value here in the in the sense here I wanted to assign 0 for all the elements and how many consecutive elements I want I want 4. So, there are 4 value 4 arrays wherein each is having a value of 0. So, I can declare that as logic type 4 bit example is the array name. 
So, those four elements are of 0, 0, 0, 0 as we can see here. The other way is I can make use of the default keyword as it is given here. So, I will just mention that tick default of 4 tick 0, H0. So, it indicates that all the four elements of the arrays are initialized with the value, same value that is 0. So, whenever we wanted to assign the same value to all the array elements or initialization purpose, then either we can go for this method or this method to initialize the element array elements. So, if at all it is a multidimensional array, as we can see that 2 and 4 are the row and column which is declared here of say 8, 8 bit. So, assignment to the multidimensional. So, I need to see that uh, this is the example which is considered example 0 and 3. So, in this case the 2 rows means I have 1 and 2, there are 4 columns means there are 4 columns like this. So, this element is 0, 0, row 0, column 0, this is 0, 1 and this is 0, 2, this will be 0, 3. Similarly, we have the next value that is 1, 0, that is row 1, column 0, row 1, column 1 row 1, column 2, row 1, column 3. Now, what is assigned? We wanted to assign the value, we wanted to assign the value that is 0, 0 to the last element of every row. So, that means the last element of first row is with 0, 3 and the last element of the second row is with 1, 3. So, that is why we consider with the 0, 3 that is nothing but we are considering this element where I am storing that as a A A. Next 1 3 in the sense one first row third column the value of A A is going to be stored. So, this is how we will make use of uh, the multidimensional array and the assignment of the value in a particular element by referring the corresponding row and the column. So, this is how we are going to see that how the arrays are can be used. This is how the multi-dimensional array assignment is going to be happen. So, we need to specify where exactly we wanted to assign the values, where exactly we wanted to assign the values corresponding to the rows and columns. So, we need to declare here that what which is the row and which is the column and what is the value. So, 8 tick h a a that is nothing but I have a 8 bit which is of hexa number a a is the value within that we wanted to store. So, this tell us the location and this is what the value which we wanted to store in the array. So, before I come to this example, I will just come back this. So, the one we have just considered it is a fixed array, fixed array in the sense where the dimension of the array is going to be decided during the code what we are writing it. That means, I exactly know that what how many elements I need for my design, I am going to declare that. So, within that we have a fixed as well as the multidimensional, fixed in the sense where we have a single row wherein we wanted to store the array values and the multidimensional means we can go for a 2D or a 3D, but as we have seen that uh, 2D uh, example where we define, we need to define how many number of rows and columns are used and how to assign the values in a given array, however we have declared. So, now let us move on to the different types of arrays that is a packed and unpacked arrays. So, in the system very log, we declare the dimension or the vector width before the object name that is called as the packed array. If it is declared after the object name that is called as the unpacked array. So, this is how the representation how we are going to declare, but how it is utilized with respect to memory, we will just see it later. So, just for an example, temp underscore var is the object name or array name what we are using. So, it is of bit type, either it has a value of 0 or 1 and it is of 8 bit. So, since it is declared, that means the object name is 
that is the array size here which is declared after the object that is called as the unpack. This is what the object name we have, it is declared after. So that is why it is called as the unpacked array. So same way I can uh, represent using the packed array wherein I will write the size before the temp variable that is the object name. So just consider an example if it is an unpacked array. So whenever you declare unpacked, b underscore unpack is the array name and 2 is to 3 that means we have a 3 arrays that is 2, 1 and 0 of each 8 bit. So the total 32 bit uh, location will be stored for every element of the array. So I have b underscore unpack of 0, 1, 2 so that is what declared over here there and since we have used only 8 bit but only thing is in the unpack. So for every element, uh, so b underscore of 0, 1, 2, it will take the separate 32 bit register to store the value of 8 bit. So the rest of the MSBs are not used in the, if at all we declare the array as unpack array. So that is what it is required here, each of the element in the array is stored in a different memory location during the simulation. So that is what the unpacked, so if it is a packed one, what happens? Here we can see that suppose we have the that is what we are de declaring the before the object name. So of 3 how many we have 0, 1, 2 there are 3 array elements of each 8 bit. So we consider array of 5 is the name of the uh, packed array name. So array 5 of 0 is of 8 bit stored here, array 5 of 1 is stored into the next consecutive memory location and next. So that means within a given 32 bit uh, uh, memory location, we can store a single memory, the, if at all we declare the packed array, all the elements can be stored in a single memory location. So that means as compared to the unpacked array, wherein we require a different memory location, where if you go for a packed array, there may be a memory utilization here, it will take the single memory. So anyway, there will be a certain advantage and disadvantage when we make use of the packed array and unpacked array. If at all we have a different uh, uh, sizing of the uh, element, suppose I have a 8 bit, another one is 16 bit, then better to go for the unpacked array declaration. So this is the main uh, difference between the uh, packed as well as the unpacked array. So as we all aware of uh, for loop, how the for loop works. It is similar way how it is also working with the system very low. So for the for loop, we need to initialize first and then we need to check the some condition and then we need to update the value. So just for an example, if at all I use a for, so initialization will be there i is equal to 0 and i less than or equal to some value, size we have to specify and I will try to increment, uh, update the value that is i plus plus. Similarly, we can make use of for each here. The main difference here is you can see the example here. It is not required when I make use of the for each loop as compared to for loop, it does not require any initialization, any condition or any update value. So how it will work that is a for each just uh, let us have an uh, example here. So the test bench is defined here. So array that is 6, there are 6 elements here, those 6 elements are tick defined, declared as tick 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have 6 elements, the name of the array is ARR of integer type int and within the initial block for each array of i. So that means automatically it will start with the first element, then increment, second element, third, fourth, fifth and sixth and it will see that how many elements are there in the array, it will continue. So we wanted to display it here, that is a dollar display we are using, array of percentage 0 d without any space print it of every i. So as soon as the first element comes in that is 1, so array of 0 is at 1 and array of 1 is 2, array of 3 is 3, array of 3 is having the value of 4, array of 4 is having the value of 5 and last element is 6. So just we will make use of for each wherein we do not require any initialization, any updation or a condition to check and need not have to update. So it will check out how many elements are there in a given array, what however we have declared, it will continue. So that is what the um, uh, extra, I mean for loop, uh, for each loop we can consider in the system very long apart from the for. 
so we can make use of for also so we here we just declared that is the for i is equal to 0 i is less than size of that so size of that uh, our source is src declared as a phi element and we are ne we need to increment the value of i plus plus so if i use a for each for destination some j so for every time what happens so depending upon the value of source it is going to be multiplied with 2 and it is stored in the destination which is declared under the for each so for each again if at all if i use a for again i have to specify for i j is equal to 0 and j is less than size of the destination uh, destination and then j plus plus where we are now replacing those uh, set of for loop with only for each of destination j so automatically it will check at the first element it will multiplied and stored in the j uh, destination of 0 again it will increment take the next data multiply by 2 again it will be stored in that so with the help of for each we can uh, have a uh, complexity of the design can be uh, handled in a efficient way using the for each in the system very low so this is the additional loop which we can consider here and in the case of uh, system Verilog, uh, we can make use of uh, both bit and array subscript, uh, subscripts to represent here. But it was not there in the Verilog 1995, but it was updated in 2001, but more frequently can be used in the system Verilog. So here we can de declare that, so source phi that is nothing but the array name is src we declared, there are phi elements here. So, we have a source of 0, similarly source of 1 and source of 2, 3, 4. So, there are 5 elements over here and each will be having the value of phi. So, each is having the value of phi, 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 phi. So, in this case, it is asked to disk that is a dollar display b, binary value of source 0th element. So, 0th element means what we have here, here uh, that is phi which is stored. So, we can write binary in terms of binary it will be 101. Then we wanted 0 of 0 that means source 0. So, if I represent this with a 101, then we want element of source 0 with the 0. So, what I have that is what we have 1 here. So, we can get the output as 1. Next the same element we are referring that is source 0, 2 is to 1 that means we wanted to have. So, this is index 2, this is index 1, this is 0. We wanted to print or a display only 2 is to 1 means only these two bits are going to be printed. So, we can have bit uh, representation also in the case of system Verilog as it was not supported by the earlier Verilog, but it was introduced in 2001. But most of the time the system Verilog helps us to make use of those uh, bit as well as the array subscript together. And uh, as we just considered fixed and multi-dimensional depending upon uh, how exactly we wanted to have the matrix. So based on that we will select whether we wanted to go for a fixed array or multi-dimensional. And if at all we consider a packed array and unpacked array, as we have seen that if it is a packed array, it is a multidimensional array where the data is stored in a consecutive blocks of memory. So, where the me single memory can be used here. So, and it is used to represent the bus oriented signals and it supports bit level operation also. Just previous example we have seen that. If it is an unpacked array wherein it stores separately. The, we require how many elements we have referring those many memory locations will be taken and used to represent the large data set or array of variables with the varying size. If at all we have varying uh, different sizes then we, it is easy for us to declare that as an unpacked array wherein uh, unpacked array it is does not support the bit level operations. So, depending upon how we are handling the element array how exactly we wanted to define the array. We can go for packed array or the unpacked array however we wanted to make use of that. So we have uh, array and uh, packed array in the case of uh, system very low we can make use of that. So that is under the fixed array. So it may be packed or, or unpacked or it may be a fixed or a multidimensional. 
then we'll move on to the dynamic arrays as the name indicates wherein the dimension of the array is not known to designer at the initial stage so however he can uh, change it so suppose you want 10 elements or 20 elements later on uh, later on 100 so during run time he can change the dimension of the array that's why it is named as a dynamic arrays and it is a one dimensional of unpacked array whose size can be set or changed at run time uh, can change it what is the dimension wherein the dimension of the array is not fixed that's why it is called as the dynamic arrays so the subscript which we are referring here is nothing but new square bracket wherein we will define that what is the dimension of the array as and when which is required. And the space for the dynamic array does not exist until the array is explicitly created at a run time. So during run time we are going to see that how many uh, what is the size of the array. So whenever it executes new whatever the number we write within that square bracket then the corresponding memory location is going to be allocated for the dynamic array. The number indicates the number of space or the element that need to be allocated and dynamic arrays are slightly more complex to handle it uh, while coding it. So that is why there are some set of uh, methods which are used to handle the dynamic arrays. So those uh, dynamic array methods are it may be a new, delete and size. So just we will see the an example how these array methods are used in the dynamic array declaration. So let us consider that we have a integer type of two dynamic arrays one is dyn another one is d2. Right now the dimension of the array is non specified here what is the uh, value that or the dimension of the arrays are going to happen with respect to dyn as well as d2. During the initial block, so we are going to assign dyn int type of array as 5 elements, allocate the 5 elements for the dynamic array. Then we will make use of the for each and i and for we will just make use of a j is the variable and initially we will assign dyn value is which is equal to d2. So initialization of the uh, both the dynamic arrays are done. Now what we will assign the d2 of first element of d2 is having the value of 5. So then we are displaying it both dyn of 0 and d2 of 0. So that means d2 array of first element is loaded with the 5 value but wherein we have dyn which is initialized initially with the 0. So just we will print dyn of 0 value as 0 as it is d2 of 0 element is 5 because we, we loaded 5 here initial value of the uh, d2 array. Then what we are doing dyn is equal to new 20. So that means the new 20 integer which are copied in the dyn that means initially which was having only 5 values. Now the change in the element for the dimension of the dyn dynamic array now it is happened with the 20 elements. So again it can be 100 that means during the run time we wanted to decide the dimension of the array that can be possible and that means initially we are not allocating any kind of memory for the uh, declaration of the memory. Suppose if I declare a of 100 say it is a fixed one. But 100 elements are not used that means the corresponding memory location is going to be wasted instead of that. So depending upon the scenario how many dimensions we require. So based on that I can make use of the dynamic array declaration and we will decide how many elements we wanted during the run time. So if I make use of the dyn dot delete that is going to delete all the elements of the array. Again you can reload with the new dimension. So that is what the advantage we have with respect to dynamic array wherein we can make use of some array methods to initialize what are the values and if at all it is required to delete also it is possible to uh, make use of a delete array method and we can find out what is the size of the array using size and the new square bucket this is going to tell us that how many uh, elements or the dimension of the array which we are going to use it. So it is what how the dynamic uh, arrays uh, can be used. So under the dynamic array we can just extend uh, that as a queue here. 
the system Verilog queues are a type of array which are automatically resized when we add or remove the element from the array. So, it is as good as queue however, we are of uh, defining that may be a first in first out that type of queue only we can say here. So, the notation which uh, we are using is the dollar. So, the Q is declared with the word subscripts containing a dollar sign that is what it is represented here. The element of a Q are numbered from 0 to the dollar. You can specify what is the uh, number of elements that we can store in the Q. Like an array uh, can directly access any element uh, with an index. So, using any kind of index where we exactly wanted to have the corresponding memory location and using that index we can specify. Uh, the corresponding location of the uh, uh, element in the queue. So, just consider an example, uh, there are again different methods which we can refer for uh, and accessing the queue. So, we have a push and uh, pop operation with respect to queue. So, push is nothing but where we wanted to store the data into the queue and pop is nothing but where we are uh, taking out the data from the queue. So, if it is a push front means we are inserting the value to the first of the queue and push back indicates that we are inserting the value from the back side. Similarly, pop front is the operation where the first element of the queue is popped up and if it is a pop back where the last element of the queue is going to be taken out. So, these are the four values or a four operations that we can perform that is a push front, push back pop front and pop back with respect to Q. So, we can make use of certain methods here that is size uh, with a bracket that returns the number of item in the Q, insert bracket that insert the given item at the specified index position. Suppose you wanted to store some value at this position. So, I can define the index of that memory location with the help of insert the corresponding value is going to be stored in that index or a memory location. Similarly, we have a delete here, it deletes the item at the specified index position. Push front, as we just see that push front, insert the given item at the front of the queue. Push back means it insert the given item at the back of the queue. Pop front means it removes and returns the first element. And similarly, pop back is nothing but removes and returns the last element in the queue. So, with the help of this push front as well as push back and pop front and pop back, we can insert or we can take out the data from the queue. So, just we will see the example how the queue works here. So, let us define there are two queues that is Q2 and Q. The Q2 Q consists of 3 and 4 the data and the other Q uh, consists of 0 to 3. So, now we are initializing. So, the value is 3 and 4 for Q2 and the value for Q, Q the named as Q itself that is 0 to 5. So, we have the uh, method here Q dot insert 1 comma j. That means, I wanted to insert the value of j to the index which is specified here. So, what is the element of q? q is consisting of 0 to 5. The first element of q is 0th position we have 0, first position we have 2, second position we have 5 at the initial stage. Now, I wanted to insert 1 the, the index with the value of j that is initialized with 1. So, we are inserting the index with the 1, the value is also 1, we now it is modified as 0, 1, next 2 and 5. So, for the first location what we are inserting, inserting the value of j, the j value is 1 itself. Now, the q datas are 0, 1, 2, 5. Next, we are telling that q dot insert 3 q2 at the th third position we wanted to insert q2. So, we have 0th position 1, 2, this is the third position. At third position, we wanted to insert q2. What are the elements of q2? That is 3 and 4. That is why instead of 5, what we have 3 and 4. These are the elements of the q2. 
which are inserted at the position of the 3 in the Q array, sorry Q. So, the last element was few that is taken as it is. Now, we wanted to delete that is Q dot delete what is the value that is at the index 1. So, this is at the 0, this is at the 1. So, what is the value at index 1 that is 1 only. So, we are eliminating this or are deleting this. Now, the content of the R, uh, Q is 0, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have deleted the value of index which is representing 1 for the Q of Q. This is how we can make use of insert and the delete with the corresponding index number where we wanted to exactly insert the value. So, I can also make use of push and uh, pop instruction as we have just considered with respect to Q, how it is operating here. So, that keyword also I can make use of, those operations are little bit faster as it is mentioned here. Now, what we are telling, this is what the Q elements we have, that is 0, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next, Q dot push underscore front. So, that means push underscore front in the sense, it is going to insert the corresponding value that is 6 at the front of the Q. So, what is happening now? The 6 is added here 6, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is going to be the element of the Q. Now, pop back in the sense the last element will be taken out from the Q and it has to be stored and it returns the value also. That is why we declare j is equal to Q dot pop underscore back. So, whenever you type pop back means it will check for the last element. What is the last element here? The last element is 5. So, the phi, phi is the value which will be stored in the j. It will returns also. It will take out the last element and also returns. So, now the value of j is the last element which was there in the q that was phi. Now, we have q dot push back 8. Push back in the sense we are inserting the value to the last of the q. So, the elements are now 0, 6, 2, 3, 4. So, the last element we wanted to uh, insert that is 8. So, the last element is now added with the 8. Next, we wanted to pop front that is q dot pop underscore front. That means, the first value need to be taken out from the q and it is stored in the j. So, what is the first element we have that is 6. So, it is taken out and it is stored in this j and now the rest of the element of the q are 0, 2, 3, 4, 8 as it is left out elements. Now, we wanted to print it. So, for each q of i, you are going to display the element. So, if you display it, you are going to get the uh, uh, array elements as q element as 0, 2, 3, 4 and 8. Suppose, you wanted to delete the q. So, make use of q dot delete. It is going to fresh it off uh, with the element or element with the 0 data. So, that means we can make use of uh, Q also. Suppose whenever we wanted to add or insert some kind of values or the element in a corresponding memory location, then we can make use of the Q in the system very long. So, another example with respect to Q is nothing but wherein we can define the dollar here. So, if at all in the square bracket, if at all dollar comes at the beginning, that is a before the colon, it gives the minimum value. If it is a after, it will give us the maximum value. So, just look at the example, the same example uh, which we have considered for the uh, Q operations. So, now we have 3 and 4 element in the Q2 as well as Q. So, the Q2, Q consists of 3 and 4 as it is and Q consists of 0, 2, 5. So, some kind of operation will make use of this here. So, initial under initial begin block. So, Q of 0 comma J, J is having a value 1. Then I can write Q of 1 colon z, uh, dollar. That means 1 colon dollar, the dollar is at the after the colon that indicates the maximum value. So, we are representing this q that is having the element 0 to 5. So, q of 0 is what? 0 only that is what we have 0. 
what is j? j is 1, 1 is printed, then q of 1 to maximum. So, 1 to maximum in the sense we have a 0th element, this is 1 and this is 2. So, maximum we have 0 index, 1 index, 2 index. So, 1 to 2 means we have a value of 2 and 5. So, now what happens q of 0 that is 0 is going to be printed, then j that is 1 is going to be printed, then 1 to maximum, 1 to maximum what we value we have 2 and 5. So, these are the values which we are going to get here is 0, 1, 2, 5. Next we can have q of 0 to 2 that means 0 to 2 what all the values that is 0, 1, 2 that means now we have q updated with this value. So, 0 to 2 in the sense I have 0, 1, 2. So, 0, 1, 3, 0, 1, 2 these 3 values. Again we wanted to insert q2. What is q2? q2 is 3 and 4. After this that means 5 will not be there now. So, I have a updated value is 0, 1, 2. Then we want q2. q2 is nothing but 3 and 4. Next we have 3 to maximum. So, 3 to maximum in the sense what we have it is last value is 5 only the maximum value is the last value in this case is 5. So, the updated q elements are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next we want q of 0 and q of 2 to dollar. So, q of 0 is 0 only wherein we do not want it 1. So, we want it from 2. So, this is not required. So, defined with q of 0 value that is 0. Next 2 to maximum that means this is not used then this is the value of 2 then the, to the maximum that is 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we have the final element as 2 leaving 1 that is 3, 4 and 5. The q is updated with the new elements as 0, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means I can make use of dollar is to 2 for minimum to maximum, so here minimum and if at all we declare 1 to some uh, dollar that indicates the maximum value. So, the other way which we have used uh, push back, push front, pop back, pop front, similarly we can make use of the other operation to insert it. So, q is equal to 6 comma q. So, we wanted to insert 6 in the q. So, what is the value of q now? We have 0, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is our word the updated q now. We wanted to insert 6 at the beginning. It is written over here first. So, 6 will be added in the q. That is why the elements now 6, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next, q of dollar. So, in the sense we wanted pop last value that is pop back. That, uh, pop back that is dollar indicates the maximum value. What is the last value in this case that is 5. So, the 5 will be taken out from the q and it will be stored in j. Now, we want q is equal to q of 0 to dollar minus 1 that means last but one value we wanted. So, what is the updated value of this is leaving 5 we have 6 0 2 3 4. So, when we pop uh, that is q is equal to q 0 to last value in the sense we have 0, 6, 0, 2, 3 and the 4 that is what we will get dollar minus 1 value. So, now we wanted to insert q comma 8, 8 in the sense last we wanted to add that is nothing but push back. Uh, push back. So, that is q what we have element 6, 0, 2, 3, 4 and 8 should be added at the last here. So, here 6 is added at the front. So, we will write 6 comma q. Here we wanted to add push back that is why we will use q comma 8. Then we wanted q of 0. So, q of 0 is 6 here. We will take out that as a j, stored in j. Next we have q is equal to q 1 is to dollar that means 1 is to maximum value. So, we have the value of 0, 2, 3 up to 8. 8 is the maximum value we are taking out. So, instead of using this push back and push front similarly uh, pop uh, push back push front and uh, pop back and uh, pop front we can make use of uh, 
dollar sign if at all it is it is for the minimum value or the maximum value we can make use of the dollar so other way of handling the q either we can use uh, these instructions as it is given or the set of array methods it may be a push front or push back or pop front or the pop back directly i can make use of those uh, keywords or the uh, syntax which we can use in the uh, accessing of the q or we can go for uh, dollar sign where we are representing with uh, what are the range through which we can uh, access the corresponding element so this is how we can access the q with respect to the corresponding uh, keyword with the push and pop and similarly we can go with a dollar sign where we wanted to define from where we wanted to access or up to what we wanted to access the uh, q element these are the example with respect to the q so considering with respect to dynamic array as well as the q so both perform very similar function, uh, function in a system verilog as they are both allocated memory at run time and it can uh, resize both of these data structures while our code is running run time we can decide it and but use for the different purposes as they are optimized for slightly different operations just for an example queues it is used when the element can be added and removed at the beginning or end of the array if that is the case we can uh, declare that as a queue the dynamic arrays are stored in a conjugative memories um, memory addresses during the simulation and when we resize a dynamic array it is often necessary for the entire array to be removed and we need to allocate the new uh, location in the memory and it is much uh, faster to add or remove the element in the queue however uh, when we want to access the element in the middle of the data structure then uh, dynamic arrays are more efficient that means depending upon how exactly we are looking for or how exactly the memory locations are uh, utilized and what kind of operations we are performing based on that uh, we can go for a dynamic array or the queue and queues are most probably whenever we wanted to add or delete the corresponding uh, memory location element it is easy for us to handle those uh, array uh, operations so these are the certain lim uh, i mean um, comparison you can say that with respect to dynamic array as well as the uh, queue operation but this can be handled in a system very log in a efficient way so the last uh, array type is associative array so of course uh, both uh, dynamic and associative are similar but the way the index asso uh, associative arrays is different from the way the that index the dynamic arrays how we exactly we are um, ref, uh, referring it so the dynamic arrays are good to occasionally create a big array but still we have a further large memory locations so for multi gigabyte it is better to go for the associative array it is the similar simulator has to search for the memory location of each element in the array for every read and write operation in the case of associative arrays so it is little bit less efficient because of the pointer which we need to use it the this normally results in slower execution time for the test uh, benches which we are creating so anyway but if it is required with the large memory location then probably the people are interested to go with the associative array declaration so when we are uh, initializing and uh, uh, indexing or when you are using it uh, with respect to the associative arrays so we have a num column here so that returns the number of entries in the associative array similarly delete it removes the entry exists it re returns one if the element exists in the uh, associative array if not it is zero first variable that assigns the value of the first index similarly next means it assigns the value of the next index to the variable which is declared here so there are uh, different array methods which uh, they are following it so it may be a array reduction method or it may be a array locator method or array sorting and ordering methods so just uh, look at the array reduction method so just consider an example uh, it takes an array and reduces it to a single value the most common reduction method uh, are sum product and or and exological operation 
just take an example uh, for the array reduction method. So, we have declared b with the byte. So, the initial dimension is not specified over here. The values are 1, 2, 3, 4. So, under initial block, so if you make use of some uh, reduction method, what happens? b is nothing but we have an array here, we declared as a associative. So, sum is equal to b dot sum. So, what it is going to give us? The sum of all the elements which are present in the uh, arrays. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, we, it is going to add it all the elements that is the total sum value is going to be become 10. Similarly, I can make use of the direct proper directly that is a product, product of b dot product. So, it is going to multiply all the elements which are defined and gives the result as 24. Similarly, b dot XOR with item plus 4. So, it will make use of with also. So, whatever the item in the sense the elements plus 4. So, the first one is 1 here, 1 plus 4 becomes 5. 5 is XOR is going to be happen with the next value as and when it comes. So, next value is 5, uh, first value is 5, next is 6, 7 and 8 as it is added with 1, 2, 3, 4 and XOR operation of all is going to happen and the value is going to be come 8, 12 after XOR operation of all the element. So, if at all you use the dollar display for displaying all, so it is going to display the sum value as 10 and product as 24 and XOR value as 12, it is going to define. So, AND operation if at all we declare AND operation, the AND operation of all the elements are going to be happen. So, that is in the sense if it is a 4 bit we have declared. So, 0, 0, uh, 1, next it will be 2, next it is 3, next it value is 4. So, all is going to be ANDed or OR operation, XOR operation, however it is declared it is going to continue. So, the array reduction method helps us to find out uh, automatically what is the sum and product and logical operation. It may be uh, XOR or AND or uh, OR operations. Similarly, we have some kind of uh, methods we have minimum and maximum directly we can make use of to find out the largest value uh, in the given array. So, let us define uh, different arrays. So, f of 6 it is nothing but uh, uh, fixed array because we wanted to tell that these are the LA array elements which is of 6 value. So, those 6 values are 1, 6, 2, 6, 8, 6. That means it is already known that how many elements we wanted to use that is why it is a fixed array of F. So, this is a dynamic where we did not mention any uh, dimension, but the elements which we have considered is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And it is a dollar, this is a Q, Q dollar, Q of there are two Q's which are declared here is one is Q, another one is TQ. The one Q the which is uh, having the elements as 1, 3, 5 and 7. So, we are going to store here in the TQ uh, that is a Q. So, Q dot min. So, what is the value of Q here? So, that is 1, 3, 5, 7 we have the minimum of Q. So, among this the minimum value is 1. So, 1 is going to be printed here. Similarly, you can make use of max here d dot d dot max. So, d in the sense we have a dynamic, the elements are 2, 4, 6, 8, 8, 10, the maximum value is 10 here, the 10 is going to be printed in the TQQ. So, TQ uh, you have a unique method also here that is f dot unique. So, go back to f here fixed array where unique you need to find out that means there should not be any repetition value. So, 1, 6, 2, again 6 is repeated will not take out, then 8, again 6 is there will not take out. So, the values are nothing but 1, 6, 2 and 8. So, unit value is going to be printed. So, that means we can directly access what may be the minimum, minimum uh, value stored in the array or it may be a maximum value. Suppose you wanted to have a unique that means no repetition should not be there then you can make use of the unique uh, method directly uh, as it is given in the example. So, another one is nothing but find, we can make use of the find also as compared to min, max and unique. So, just consider an example, now we have the dynamic array that is D with the 6 element that is 9, 1, 8, 3, 4, 4. 
So, here uh, we will write D find with item greater than 3. So, we need to search in the dynamic array where we wanted to find out what the item is greater than 3. So, 9th first we will start here 9 of course it is greater than 3, 1 it will not take, 8 it is greater than 3, 3 but anyway it is equal to 3 but it will not be there, 4 of course it is greater than 3 and 4 again it is greater than 3. So, it is going to display 9, 8, 4 and 4 which are given here. So, it is going to display. So, it is as good as what we are writing if for each of every element if d of i is greater than 3 we wanted to push back that means we wanted to push back in the sense of what that is we need to enter it to the back. So, first what it will do check it will check 9 right. So, d of i the first value is 9. So, it will push back means the last q will be 9 here then it will increment the next data is 1 it is not greater than 3 it will not consider next data is 8 again what happens this will be moved here the 8 will be inserted here because it is a push back again the next element is 3 it is not greater than 3 next what is happening 4 4 is again pushed here that is at the last push back again the last element is 4 again 4 is going to be printed so 9 8 4, 4. So, this set of code can be replaced with only one line that is d dot find with class we are using with the item greater than 3. So, set of uh, lines can be avoided by making use of the find uh, array locator method. So, you can make use of other way also d dot. So, tq is the q which we are defined here d dot find index with item greater than 3. We wanted to find out the index wherever we have greater than 3. So, first element of course 9 which is greater than 3 that means the index is what? 0. Second data is 1. What is the index? That is 1. It is not greater than 3 will not consider. Next number is 8. It is greater than 3. What is the index here? This is 0. This is 1. This is 2. 2 will be printed. Next 3 which is not greater than 3, next 4 but what is the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 is the index and what is the again you have a 4 which is greater than 3 of course but what is the index? Index is 5. So, we can find we can make use of d dot find find index we are winding out the index of every element with item greater than 3. Similarly, you are asking here, here to uh, find out d dot underscore find underscore first with item 99. Is there any item with greater than 99 in the first index? Of course, it is not there. It will not print any value. Next, find underscore first underscore index with item which is equal to 8. Is there any index which is having the value? which is equal to 8. Of course, it is there. Then what is the index? 0, 1, 2. So, the index is nothing but 2. So, in uh, D of 2 is consisting of the value of 8. Next, find last with item is equal to 4. Is there any last item which is having uh, value of 4? Yes. What is that? It is the last item the having a value of 4 that is 4. And the last index he wanted to print. So, what is the last index? Last index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The index last index is 5. What is the value of that? The value of that is nothing but the 4. So, index is 5, the value is 4. That means with the with the expression, the system very log how to operate and perform the search operation in the array that can help us to find out to access the every element. So, I can make use of the find with so, we can access the every element in the array and whether you wanted to pre get it that data or you wanted to insert that value, you can make use of in an efficient way. So, these are the array locators. Uh, it may be a find or as we considered a minimum or a maximum or a unique. So, using these methods, it is easy for a designer to handle the any type of array. It may be a dynamic or associative array. However, we have just seen that. So, these are the array methods which are helping to access the array in an efficient way.
way. So the last method in the associative array as we just considered it is sorting and ordering. So just let us take an example uh, dynamic array of D where 6 elements are defined here. Those elements are 9, 1, 8, 3, 4, 4. So I can make use of some kind of sorting and ordering. So it may be a reverse, it may be a sort, it may be a resort or shuffle. So the elements are given initial values. So reverse it in the sense it will try to print in the reverse order. So D dot reverse. So the 4, 4, 3, 8, 1, 9 is going to be printed. So you wanted to sort it D dot sort. So from the lower value to the maximum value it is going to be displayed. So the sorting is 1, 3, 4, 4, 8, 9 from smaller value to the larger value. Reverse it in the sense again it will take out from maximum value to the minimum value that is R sort and shuffle it. So however we wanted to uh, consider with 9, 4, 3 uh, according to the choice of the tool it is going to shuffle it. So these are the uh, our sorting and ordering arrays which we can consider with respect to um, arrays. So these keywords are helping or you can say that a, a method or a array reduction method or a sorting method which helps the designer to handle in an efficient way how exactly the elements need to be added or it need to be accessed or it can be removed in the corresponding array. So this helps us the designer to handle the complex design while uh, making use of the system very low. Well.